talking about Hack the People. They are the founders of this new way to help mentors, mentorship, and getting more people involved in more things. Hello, folks. How are y'all doing today? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a little mm, last night, too. Mm. So we're having some video problems right at the moment, pretty obviously. I'm, I've been a long time into Kubuntu kind of person, and it's only kind of times like this that it really kills you. Fortunately, my colleague Liz and I work very hard on helping people get comfortable in a lot of different kinds of situations, including ones in which there are technology fails. So Liz and I had co-founded Hack the People in 2012, and we've spent quite a bit of time teaching people who don't have the kind of leg up that some others do in technology, how to get mentoring, how to hack the pipeline to the top parts of technology to improve your career and to learn the things that they don't teach you in college. There's no class in college about how to get a job, right? You can learn Python or C or Java if you went to University of Michigan, which was a lot of help. And the information that gets passed on person to person is the only thing you really need to get a job in technology. So what's the problem? The problem is many fold. And we're going to talk a little bit about what those problems are, why they're so invidious, so insidious, so ubiquitous, and how we can all help as a community. This is a pretty special community, ShmooCon, the security community at large, and the kind of welcome that Liz and I have gotten in the security community is, it's wonderful, honestly. Uh, we started out at DEF CON, like a lot of us did, and we joined a hacker team called the Psychoholics, and I'm fairly sure this is one or two of you guys in here, there we go. <laughs> and the kind of welcome that it brought us, the kind of connections that it brought us, is why we know that people making connections to others on their same level and up and down the scale of expertise, ability, and privilege in technology is what really makes the difference. Okay. Are we doing a little bit better over there? Okay, cool. If there are actual pictures, cool. It's like Dr. Seuss, it'll be great. So let's talk a little bit about what the real problem is. Junior people in technology don't know how to be not junior anymore. Okay? They can get a job right out of college. A lot of colleges are really good at hooking you up with a job. They will find you an internship or a spot where you can get your first entry-level web developer position. But then what do you do after that? If you're somebody who hasn't been inculcated with the values of the corporate world, with understanding why we network, why we talk to people, why we make connections and friends, and why the people in this room are our colleagues, then all of a sudden it looks like this opaque world where there's no real clear path ahead. And that's why Hack the People has found, has, has found and is continuing to find that people are starved for mentorship. So junior people become not junior anymore by finding a mentor. Disadvantaged people sometimes drop out of technology because they don't know how to deal with their situation and they feel very, very alone. Now, this can be a little bit of a, of a different kind of talk here at ShmooCon. And that is because we need some audience participation. To be very blunt, underprivileged is, a, underprivileged is a crap word for what we're trying to express. Everybody knows what we mean when we talk about a lack of privilege in technology. The problem is, what is the word we use to describe people who are not Caucasian or Asian and straight and male in technology? It's really hard to encapsulate this concept without insulting people, being inaccurate, and I hate being inaccurate, and having people more worried about the words you're using than solving the problem you're trying to solve. So, by vocal acclamation, we're gonna have to get some, some kinds of, of new words to express this concept. What do you call somebody who, who didn't get handed a computer when they were 13? We all know that you have to be coding by the age of 13 in order to do any good in startups, right? So Paul Graham tells us. So, what do you do? What do you call those people? Uh, call someone like me, us. Thank you, I like us. How do I use us in a sentence when I say us people? That works, <laughs> just not bad. All right, Tamsin's got a great idea, us. Does anybody else have a word? We're gonna vote, and I'm, I'm deadly serious. What do we at Hack the People use to express this concept without making you guys feel crappy about it? I'll call it us people, better than those people. <laughs> Does anybody else have any ideas? Noobs, all right, I like noobs. 
it, it encapsulates the idea of being new to technology, but it doesn't necessarily separate out people that are going to have more problems finding friends and mentors and people that are and look like them in tech. Noobs is good. Us noobs. Coming closer. Anybody else? Outsiders. Outsiders. Okay. I like outsiders. It works well because it doesn't have any connotation of, of socioeconomic status or ethnicity. Outsiders is pretty damn good. All right. Anybody have any better than outsiders? Also, outsiders includes Batman. What's that? Anomalous. <laughs> I like that one too. <laughs> All right. So I'm thinking that probably the two greatest ones I've heard so far are outsiders and uses. Okay. Outsiders is kind of winning in my head. It helps a lot. Does anybody think that outsiders could be improved upon in here? Jim totally wins. Outsiders is a wonderful way to put it. The outside people, the ones who need the help. So now we've got a word for it. Thank you, because oh, we have been racking our brains over that. And the, all the beers last night in McClellan's didn't help. Okay, so here's a pretty scary issue. People who are lucky enough to get mentors sometimes are terrible mentees, okay? Uh, there may be all kinds of problems when you take on someone as a mentee that we need to talk about today. And this is where we're going to talk about some really uncomfortable issues in technology, okay? Mentees might lack appreciation for the things that they've been given. They might not understand that the purpose of mentoring and being a mentee is to pay it forward. You, try and, you, you pay some of it back, but mostly you're paying it forward. You're trying to help the people who come after you. They may disappear personally or conceptually after they get the help that you're trying to give them. Um, that lack of communication after we do a favor for somebody is a real telltale sign of somebody who's not necessarily the greatest mentee. There might be a lack of understanding that I am not a favor ATM. I don't have the time in my day to do favors for everyone and, and have it be something that is just expected of me as if I was a machine sitting there because I'm a woman in technology. And it's seriously difficult to get folks to understand that sometimes. This is something they've started to talk about on Forbes very recently. Favors and networking from people who are outsiders are often seen as less valuable than those done by your more privileged people in technology, the insiders in technology. And that has to do with the notion that if you are, if you are like someone who's coming up in tech, that you want to help them. You want to help them regardless of whether or not you have the personal ability or the bandwidth to do so. There are mentees who are not yet socialized into the unspoken rules of technology. There's a fundamentally unequal relationship between a mentor and a mentee. And the problem is, is that many mentees don't understand that there's an implied reciprocity there. You as a mentor have to tell somebody sometimes in a really uncomfortable way, yes, I'm helping you and now you owe me. Except it's a good thing to get owed and to, be, and, and, and to owe someone in technology because it's a network of favors. You're helping people, right? But there's only so much any one person can give without getting some back. This is not cynical. This is about giving to people that you want to help, want to see succeed, and them wanting to help you back in return. This is not cynical, it's not politics. It's a little bit of politics. But what it is, is having colleagues. You've got colleagues all of a sudden. And if you think of it in that way, sometimes you have to explain in this uncomfortable sense that your mentee needs to help be reciprocal in that relationship. Karen Sumberg of the Center for Work-Life Policy says that the relationship also typically falls on the mentee to build and to maintain the relationship. I like to say that as a mentee, if I'm not working harder than my mentor to maintain that relationship, I'm not doing my job. The mentor is likely more successful, likely someone who's further along in their career, and probably has even less time than I do right now, which is physically and temporally impossible, I promise you. But you have to work hard to maintain that relationship. Failing to understand or acknowledge the effort put forth on the mentee's behalf, either in complexity or in magnitude. The complexity and the magnitude of the favors that are done for you, of the help that's given you as a mentee, is sometimes you can't even see it. Sometimes you, you see only the tip of the iceberg of the work that is done behind the scenes on your behalf. You are helping your mentor by carrying on their lineage, by being part of their network. And they'll put effort out on your behalf, but what if you don't see what's being done on your behalf? Assume that they're doing three to four hundred times more than you possibly could imagine, and you're going to get accurate, okay? 
failing to understand that as a mentee, you have an obligation to contribute to the career and work of your mentor by recommendations, education, introductions, and support. If you just came out of college, you probably have a feel for whatever this Snapchat is that all the kids are using these days. And now you can teach somebody who maybe isn't as familiar with all of the applications that are being used by every 19-year-old in a Stanford computer science class, what it is that people are about to get excited about in 18 months in a VC cycle, okay? That's valuable information that a mentee has that they need to be working on presenting to their mentors. Companies do not set up effective internal and external mentorship programs. I have more colorful words for this. If you've been assigned a mentor at another company and, or even within your own company and you understand that that mentorship is both random and potentially punitive. Has that ever happened to anybody in here? If you get assigned a mentor out of the middle of anywhere, you're starting to ask yourself, what did I do wrong? Why did they give me a mentor? Am I, am I sucking? I, so <clears throat> companies set up terrible internal and external mentorship programs. So the scope of this problem is pretty huge. We all understand that mentorship is the single largest contributing factor to making sure that outsiders can make it in technology. So what are we all trying to do? <sighs> let's see here. Liz, let's talk about what we've been trying to do to address the problem. The first thing we tried was an organization called Lady Coders. A little closer to you. A little closer to you. Oh. The first thing we tried was an organization called Lady Coders. Mm -hmm. um, we had seminars and we taught classes. And we have an example here of what we did. And I don't have the working? sound hooked up. Here's the sound. Is it plugged in? While she's plugging that in and talking about the uh, examples of the videos that we've released to assist people in technology, let me tell you a little bit about why it is that it's now Hack the People and not Lady Coders. We've got hundreds, now more than a thousand people in our meetup groups. And at one of our Lady Coders meetup groups in New York City this last year, we had an issue where it was entirely female. The group was entirely female. Um, a young man showed up to participate in the group and he was attacked by the women in the audience. Um, he, not physically, I mean, it wasn't like scary B-movie. I'm talking about the idea of someone standing up and saying, what is he doing here? We, this is supposed to be a safe space. And one of the biggest things that we do is try to create the notion that a safe space is one in which nobody's going to be attacked in any way, shape, or form for being physically present. We realized that lady coders was a bad word for what we were trying to express. We realized that it implied the people that were allowed to come instead of just the word we had called ourselves when we started the group. So we changed the name to Hack the People, which might have had something to do with a couple of late night viewings of hackers. Um, <laughs> but we think it works a little bit better. <laughs> if the video is going to work, we could do it. If not, we can probably just go to the to telling them where to download it on. I got it on BitTorrent, and we've got it on YouTube as well. And you'll be able to get a link for that at the very last slide. Is it, is it going to work? It's fine, OK. So assume that we've got some clips for you. And again, this is, I tell everybody to use Linux except for my parents, and this is why. So. <laughs> uh, OK, so yeah, we tried okay. the lady coders, and we found that the name was problematic. Mm -hmm. um, so we changed the name to Hack the People because we wanted to be more inclusive, mm -hmm. because we, don't, we aren't just trying to help people who identify as female. We're trying to help everybody who needs help. So uh, the first thing that we've done is create mentorship groups. So these are groups that we have a maximum of 12 people. Um, right now we're using Meetup for the format, and if more than 12 people show up, 16, we split them. Yeah. 16? 16. Uh, if more than 16 people show up, we split them into smaller groups. Mm -hmm. This is so that people can actually get to know the people in their small group. We've all been to meetups that have two or 300 people in them, and the whole point is to spend two seconds talking to each person and get a card. That's not what we're after here. We're actually trying to help get people to help each other. So we try and split junior and senior people into each group and have them talk. And what ends up happening is things that wouldn't necessarily happen in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. <laughs> The group is able to talk to a mentee in a way that a single person who doesn't know them very well would be intimidated to do. They can give them the kind of feedback that could be seen as criticism if it were coming from a single person. There's no, well, who are you to tell me this when there's three or four people who agree? 
that this is a possible solution to an issue that somebody's having. We have a very structured setup for our meetups. Uh, we first have a keynote speaker, which doesn't necessarily have to be a big name. In fact, we're not seeking out big names at the moment because there's a lot of expectations that go around that and you bring people to the group who aren't there for mentorship, they're there to hear somebody talk. So once the speaker is finished speaking for X amount of time, which we've set up, then the group splits up and the speaker becomes part of at least one of the groups and everyone talks. What am I working on right now? What do I need help with right now? What issues am I having at work? We go through everyone in the group to make sure everyone gets a chance to talk, everyone gets a chance to ask for help, and pretty much everybody needs help from the group. I don't think we've run into any situations where someone, even the speaker, didn't need help with something. And usually there's a lot of really good suggestions going on. I've never been to a meetup where I didn't get more information and help than I gave. So we've got over a thousand members now? We have something like a thousand fifty plus and more are joining every day at this point. We're in seven cities mm -hmm. and uh, it seems to be spreading pretty quickly. People mm -hmm. are enjoying this and every time we end one of the meetups, we um, go back over things and find out what we could do to improve, if we could scale down the time of this and maybe give a little more for that. But so far we seem to have it pretty well dialed in. We created the meetup group that we wanted to go to. I've been to enough meetups where there's an hour and a half of networking and then someone talks and then there's beer. Without any structure, you end up hiding over in the corner and staring at your phone the entire time. Our structure is very stringent in that we do start on time. Mm -hmm. If people just don't show up, then we start on time anyway. Because it doesn't respect people's, it sets a bad example to not respect the people's time who did show up on time. Uh, the organizers themselves are getting mentorship from us. So we've got something set up where everybody's getting help. We're getting mentorship from people within the groups. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Nobody goes not getting something out of the groups. The organizers themselves get mentorship, and by that we mean a sort of meta-mentorship. Many of the people who are organizers for HTP, this is the first time they've ever been in a management position. And some, someone within Hack the People looked at them and said, you know, you'd be good at this. You'd be, and many of them, that's the first time anyone had ever heard that. You'd be good at running this. You'd be good at managing people. You can do it, and now we'll show you how was nice and management and mentorship books and and the meta mentorship that happens right there just it, they blossom as human beings it's amazing to watch and they start going for better promotions one woman our national uh, executive organizer she just got her first architecture gig she said I asked for it to me that doesn't feel good she's learning how to manage herself and the people around her We've got companies who are recognizing that this is doing good within the community, and they are just giving us space for this. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Um, and they're getting something back out of it. They're getting these people who maybe didn't think of X company in Redmond in a positive light before, sees that, well, they're trying to help out with mentorship, so maybe they're not so bad after all. Or who knows, they can draw their own conclusions. The companies that provide this kind of mentorship, it's the same sort of non-cynical quid pro quo we were talking about in the mentorship relationship. Companies that care about mentorship need to be able to make their presence known to people that, well, they're looking for outsiders. All these companies are looking for outsiders to join, and this is how they can find them. Alrighty. So we have some additional steps that we've been taking to address this problem. Training people to be good mentees is part of a curriculum that we're actually developing right now. One of those things is explaining something as simple as how to write a thank you card to someone. You would be stunned at how many people don't. I, I'm, I'm amazed at a, an implied gratitude that never really gets implied to the mentor eventually. And so just learning how to express gratitude comfortably is one of the biggest lessons that many of our mentees say that they learn. The small mentorship groups that are, we've, we've got a pilot program spinning up right now to create a six person mentorship group. And this is gonna be running in New York City, in Silicon Valley and in Seattle. Um, are six people, three people that think of themselves more as mentors, more senior and more able to give, and three people that are more junior on the tech scale. The reason we do this is because mentoring within a company can be very problematic. In an example that Liz and I have crafted extremely carefully, imagine a 50-year-old supervisor trying to tell their 25-year-old supervisee that their pants are too tight. How do you say that? You're fired is the next word that comes out of somebody's mouth. 
So how do you tell someone that their choice of attire or that their vocal patterns or that something else about them is stopping them from doing something they want to do? You sort of can't inside a company. And so we're creating an organization that lets people recommend that you go be part of an external mentorship group to get the kind of feedback that they really can't give you. It's, it's intimidating and very seriously scary to try to tell someone something that you know could be putting your career at risk. And this is a path for people to provide help for someone they can't personally help. We have group, rules for the group that are as complex as the rules for our meetups. And assume that we've been fine tuning this all along. We could go through the little bits and pieces of this all day long, but the truth is, we're careful about the way these are structured to make sure that we're helping people instead of irritating them and that we have a clear curriculum every time the groups meet. It progresses. People learn things like how to create your resume to work, how to shake hands, how to introduce yourself properly, why you go have beer after the event, which is self-explanatory, but still you have to explain this to some people. All right. We also do some weekend coding sprints with many purposes. The meta management alongside is, is part of the reason we do this, so. So how can you help? Find a mentee, that's simple, right? Just go out and find somebody. No. Um, you need to be deliberate about choosing your mentees. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be an effort that takes all of your time to help somebody. You shouldn't have to force yourself upon somebody. But if somebody comes to you asking for help, that's a wonderful start. If you find somebody who's working on a project that you think is awesome and you think you could help them out because they're missing some skills that are related to that, ask them if they're interested in some help. Tell them they're doing a great job. What can I do to help? Seek out mentors yourself. Try and create a community of mentors. One thing we found, and I think everybody realizes, is we don't all get one mentor who is the perfect person who can help us with all the things. There isn't anybody out there like that. You're gonna have multiple mentors, and you're gonna be mentoring multiple people who have other mentors in return. Maybe you can help them in this area, but not so much in that area, because you just don't have that experience in common. Common experience is the thing that brings people together. And you only need to know one thing more than your mentee to be a mentor for them. You want to do the last point there, and then I can jump in again? Oh, join a Hack the People group in your area, or start one. If there isn't one, and you see that there's a need in your area, let us know. We've got guidelines on our website, hackthepeople.org, and we can help you out. There's something else that you can do to help, and it's going to be really uncomfortable, and yet we're going to ask you to do it. We need you to talk about what goes right and what goes wrong in your mentoring and menteeing experiences. This is a really uncomfortable topic because it's very personal. So I will tell a couple of stories about my mentees and mentors right now without using names for very obvious reasons. And I would encourage you to never ever name your mentors and mentees if you can help it unless you've got some very specific permissions. I've had good mentees and bad mentees and I've had good mentors and bad mentors. I have some of the greatest mentees and mentors that I've ever had in my life right now. And the mentors that I have, I probably have two main ones right at the moment. Um, one reached out to me, the other I reached out to. I knew that neither of those people could provide everything for me. Uh, in, our, in our day jobs, Liz and I are the CEO, I'm the CEO and Liz is the CTO of Fizmint, which uh, we're in a human resources automation company. And coming from the engineering, back, the, the engineering background that I have and the escape from academia that I was lucky enough to pull off, I, uh, I didn't know how to be a CEO. I still don't. I don't think anybody ever really knows all of what you need to know. And if they do, then I wouldn't work for them. Um, and I, I went and deliberately sought out someone who was going to be able to be a pattern for me to follow, someone I could admire, someone I could learn from, and someone that would be able to give me very direct and to the point advice. I probably take up five minutes of his time in three months. Uh, my other mentor tends to be someone who teaches me about how to be an executive, how to handle the life of the successful technologist, and he's someone that just reached out to me out of the middle of nowhere, and I was a little stunned when he did, actually. Uh, you would be very surprised at the response you might get if you look around for someone you think is doing something cool and just reach out and say, I think what you're doing is great. You want to talk sometime? I know a little bit about what you're doing, and I think you might be very surprised at the response you would get. 
As a result, I've developed some amazing relationships with people. I have mentors, I have sponsors, I have champions, and I do my best to pass that on. I've had bad mentors too. I've had people that wouldn't take my calls. I've had people that gave me advice that was irrelevant to what I was doing because they weren't really paying attention to what I was saying. They wanted to feel like they had a mentee more than they wanted to mentor. I've had great mentees and some mentees that were a little problematic. Um, ones who didn't understand the boundaries of the relationship. They thought I was their friend. I'm not their friend. I'm not the friend to somebody who needs my help in their career and with, uh, among whom there is no presumption of equality. I am there to help them. I'm there to sponsor them and to champion them. They're to pass on the information that I get from my mentors. Now, they've got grand mentors. And this web that we're building that is hopefully full of integrity and, and courtesy is the thing I would hope everybody in here would want to create. And it's the single thing that makes people who are outsiders welcome and able to function in technology. This is the uncomfortable part. We're asking you to talk about this and talk about your good and bad experiences as a mentor and a mentee because there are attitudes that are common among the top parts of technology that Liz and I call what used to be called the country club mentality. You will often find people that have had a lot of money and a lot of what can only be termed privileged at the, privilege at the very top levels of tech. And we all, we all know what it looks like when a tech company does an IPO. We know what the board of directors looks like, right? So how do you learn about those rules so that you're acting in a way that is expected, hopefully being at least some portion of true to yourself along the way, and get the help that you need? These are unspoken rules. And they're unspoken because, just like Liz said, we just assume that everybody knows them. I, I certainly didn't. I grew up picking berries on a farm. I, I don't know a lot of the, the attitudes and traits that I need to look like I belong. And you can see that this is not just an uncomfortable topic for me. It's going to be uncomfortable to all of your mentees who are 22 and coming out of college who have written brilliant, brilliant programs. And they're scared to tell you that they don't know which fork to use at the table when they go to a VC meeting. That's the kind of question that you need to be able to answer and ask and talk about openly. So this is uncomfortable, right? Nod your heads to talk about this kind of stuff. So you're scared about your table manners. How do I know if I'm going to do a right at a, at a meeting? So think about the fact that outside your experience, the person that you're mentoring or the person you can learn from can have this information. You know, you don't have to put it out there on Twitter. Just ask it privately, and that's how you'll get that information. So this is where we see, or hopefully, see tech mentorship in the future. We need to see more companies with formal and informal mentorship programs. Companies don't create mentorship programs for a lot of reasons, or they create bad ones. They're either punitive, or they don't permit external mentorship, being mentored from outside the company. Why? Recruitment. They're going to poach you. So, why would you let somebody outside your company who is senior to and respected to your trusted developers mentor them? That's insanity in terms of recruitment and retention policies, right? Except that if someone's not fulfilled at your company, they're going to leave anyway. So we want to see companies develop mentorship programs that are exchanges, internal and external. We're offering to help companies set this up. We provide the expertise and small groups in each city that we're currently in to go talk to companies about what mentorship policy is like and how to set a good one up. New employees in technology shouldn't feel lost. There's this feedback loop that's created when you show up someplace and you're not welcome and you know it and you leave and then the next person who is kind of like you, an outsider, doesn't feel welcome either. It's sheer luck a lot of the time to feel like you belong in technology. I feel like I belong in technology because of my hacker group, my mentors, my colleagues. I mean, I can't do any of this without Liz. I'll promise you that right now. And I hope every one of you can both feel that and pass that feeling along to someone. This is kind of soft, right? It's not like we've got code scrolling up here. But if there was any talk that your, that your future friends and mentees are going to be glad that you went to, it's this one. You can give them a hand, you can help them out, and you can make your world and theirs a lot better. All right, having a mentor within the company that you're in who is not your boss is also a very good idea. There's always gonna be that person who can tell you about the culture of the company. And again, it's sometimes uncomfortable to have that be your boss. 
because you're not in a mentorship relationship then. That's your boss, you have to do what they say. And that's not the same thing as taking the advice of someone who has your best interest at heart and trying to work it into what your worldview is. More tech mentorship in general. People need to have more than one mentor. Think of the areas in your life that you want to improve in, that you want to succeed in. No one person, like Liz said, can be everything to everybody. And the truth is, in technology, you can't, you can't be everything to just one person. And in fact, one person only has so much mentorship, period, to give. Hack the People didn't just come out of Lady Coders. It came out of the fact that when Liz and I put ourselves out there as people who are willing to mentor people in technology, we had dozens, even hundreds of phone calls a day. In something that I don't usually talk about, I went and got, I'm an engineer, remember, I went and got emotional training to help me handle the number of women and, and, and outsiders who were coming to me asking me for mentorship. I wanted to help them all and I don't know how. The best thing I think we can do is provide a venue, a way for people to help themselves. Because we do that anyway, right? This is the mentorship equivalent of why haven't you Googled it yet, okay? I hope that what we've said to you today is something that makes you seek out, even send one email or one tweet to somebody that may not feel as welcome as you do in technology. In fact, the very last thing that Liz and I are gonna do before we open up for questions and answers is we're gonna teach you something that many of the outsiders in your technolo technological circles may not know. We're gonna teach you how to give a handshake, okay? Watch this. Hi, I'm Tara, how y'all doing? Hey, how are you? How you doing? All right. Nobody knows how to do that when they're a little kid, okay? No one understands how to give a proper handshake. Right? That's a nice firm grip. Awesome. And you do that <laughs> because it makes you feel like you are connected to that person. Right? I can be connected to every one of you in here right now, but I'm probably really connected to you. Right? You want to hire me? I'm, uh, you can hire me. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is the thing that you need to teach the people that you are mentoring. If they're just raw out of college and they don't know how to give a good handshake, are you going to hire them? You ever, like, shaking the hands of someone who's got the kind of limp gross, clammy, no, you've got to learn how to be someone who handshakes well, how to direct your gaze at someone. Hey, how you doing? Hey, that's a really good handshake, awesome. I would like every single person in here, please, to stand up and trade a handshake with somebody in this room. Give it a shot and learn how to do it, okay? Hit the web of your fingers, okay? Please Say do hi. not pop into your hand first. Hey, what's going on? Hey, how y'all doing? Pass that along, hi, how you doing? Nice working. You. No working. You already are. Absolutely. Here we go. Learn it. All right, folks. You've exchanged a handshake with at least somebody in this room. A lot of people don't know how to do that, to properly look someone in the eye, shake their hand, and say, Hi, I'm Tara. It's nice to meet you today. You As someone who was in public health for a short amount of time, I would like to remind everyone to cough into the crook of your arm, <laughs> not your hand. All right. You now know something. You can teach every one of your new mentees, okay? Teach them that, please. That's where it starts. Look in the eye, shake the hand, and say, hi. Hire me. <laughs> All right? I think we're open for questions. Is that back there? Oh, you stole the microphone, Liz. It working. Does anybody have any questions? I'll just repeat it. Go ahead. You said you had a question? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, uh, I work for a company that employs a lot of women, um, mm -hmm. uh, developers, and so forth. And I was actually, uh, thanks, and I was actually trying to get uh, them to form a group because they're in a big media company. It would be a, a great, you know, thing mm -hmm. to do. And I actually ran into a lot of resistance from them. 
and part of the problem may have been that it was me, a man, you know, proposing it. It's entirely possible, and I, I was cognizant of that. But they also pointed out to me <coughs> that the mere act of forming that group would ghettoize them, you know, in the company. I just want to know what you thought about that. These sort of make us different to begin with. <laughs> so says my husband is probably in here somewhere. Hi, baby. Uh, <laughs> so let me ask you something. What was your, why was your impulse to put them in a group and to stick them in a corner and say, can you talk to each other? What did you try to accomplish? To give them a voice. To give them a voice. You wanted them to have a voice all together as one. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that presume that they all think the same thing? I don't think so. I mean, I, I didn't think that. I thought it was uh, uh, an effort to attract people into the company. Um, it was, a, in, in other words, it, the mm -hmm. idea was to form a place for people who wanted to get in, yep. into the company to go to, to connect with. Before anything else, do let me say this. Thank you for seeing the problem. You at least saw the problem, right? So thank you. You took the first step. You saw that there was something going on. There is no clear answer to anything other than opening your eyes first to what's going on. The women at your company probably knew really, really well that they were being ghettoized. They were probably ghettoized before They're all they brilliant. Yes. What's that? They're all brilliant. Sure, they're all brilliant. You know, we're in technology. We're smart people. So, and I wonder if you mightn't have asked them, what is it that you think you could do to solve the problem? That's always a possibility. Okay. I think we had another question back there, and the microphone's up here. Hi, uh, thank you very much for giving this talk. I wanted to ask you, uh, what do you think the number one thing that a mentor or, or a mentee that's in that kind of relationship? I can't hear you, can you speak up? Sorry. What do you think uh, for a mentor or a mentee uh, in that kind of a uh, interaction, what do they think that they're doing right that they're probably getting wrong? Interesting. I know Liz has an opinion. What does a mentor and a mentee think they're probably doing right that they're probably doing wrong? <laughs> She's got an opinion. I've heard this one. <laughs> um, I would say for mentors, a lot of time it's an understanding that your advice isn't law. Just because you suggest someone to something and you think it is the right thing to do, sometimes a mentee is not going to follow that advice. And maybe that's a mistake, but it's a mistake that they have to make. As far as mentees go, the biggest problem is that they think mentorship is a one-time thing, and that once they reach the goal that they have right now, they can just go away. That's they the just biggest don't need you I've anymore. Seen. Yes. Those are probably the two biggest mistakes we see. Does anybody else have any other questions? Sure. You can holler out really loudly. What about the lack of motivation for the younger age? The lack. Goddamn kids, get off my lawn. I know, believe me, I've, I've seen it. They're all playing the Nintendo and listening to the music. No, they, um, the lack of motivation you're talking about is a different style of communication. The, the quote, millennials we all like to dump on have a shorter form of communication that I've seen. And that short form comes off as terse, as rude, as unmotivated, and it's really problematic. And, and we interpret that often as a lack of motivation or a lack of desire for the help that we're providing. If I spend an hour crafting a three paragraph email to someone I want to try to help and they respond with a fine thanks, I'm not going to send another email to them. And it's, it could be that they think they've done it right and I think that's what you're probably going with. I don't know that there's a lack of motivation so much as a serious problem in communicating gratitude and intent. Sometimes there is a lack of motivation. Oh, yeah. That is something that can happen. And that's why you have to be able to recognize a bad mentee. If you're doing all the work, you probably need to stop. Mm -hmm. Step back and let them ask for help. That's a very different situation. Yes, also mentees or mentors. Check in with your mentees, but not all that often, maybe once every, however often your relationship works. But I try to reach out at least once every couple of months if I haven't heard from them. And realize that they're busy, I'm busy, but that it's good just to say, I'm here if you want to know anything. That communication or lack thereof can also be intimidation on their part, not a lack of motivation. They might be scared to talk to you, 
they might think, they might be extremely intimidated by you, all right? I happen to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I pants fail once a week. You know, I'm, I'm apparently a pretty scary person to some of the people that I mentee and yet, at the, or that I mentor, and yet I'm the one who walks around all day long not remembering where I put the tuna fish. I, so I'm not scary to me, you're not scary to you, but you might be frightening to the people that you're mentoring, okay? Think about trying to open up a little bit for them because they're probably a little nervous already. Does this make sense? Good. Excuse me, would you mind stepping outside for your conversation? Thank you. Oh yeah, you. Wow, that's the smartphone for you. Doesn't even realize we're talking to him. There's two microphones. No, six microphones up here. <sighs> People want to be helped. They want you to help them. They want a lot of things. People always want all the things. You can only be so much to so many people. If you have a specialty, if you're good at one thing, that's probably the thing they're coming to you for help in. Divide your time up to the best of your ability and don't let it take too much from you. Try to conserve the energy you have so that the people you can help, you will. Don't continue a mentor and mentee relationship past its sell-by date. Sometimes those people that you can't reach, the ones you think of as unmotivated, simply don't want to be mentored by you anymore. They're breaking up with you, you know. Maybe they're just not that into you. So, <laughs> you can do what you can do and no more. Does anybody else have any more questions? Some guy's gonna talk after us, apparently, so we should, yeah, let him get on the stage eventually. Oh, we have a question, yes. <laughs> The question is, how do you get out of an assigned mentor role inside your company? Only yeah. I don't feel like no, that's the reason why anybody would try to get out of that relationship. Yeah, trying to get out of an assigned mentor relationship, propose an alternate. And the problem with those assigned mentorships is often trying to get out of them is a black mark against the character who's not doing a good job as your mentor, whether or not they've ever even tried or they're trying at all. So. Your best shot is find external mentorship and don't do more than you have to to maintain the relationship you've got. You're mentoring someone else? Tell them to join a Hack the People group or start one yourself. Yeah. Maintain all the Same maintain thing. all Go to whoever's in yeah. charge and suggest an alternate. Maybe yes. talk to that person first and make sure they're okay with it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of chemistry that doesn't work out in relationships, any relationships between human beings. It'll work out. <laughs> Minimize the amount of effort you need to put into it without insulting the person and find external mentorship. If they're holding you back, they're holding you back. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you very much for your time. This was an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for coming.